Hello and welcome to a five-part series of slidecasts covering a presentation made by Silex Technology at the 2014 Freescale Technology Forum in Houston, Texas. In this first section I will be introduce introducing the contents of the presentations and be providing some background on the subject of power save issues in WLAN or Wi-Fi. My name is Andrew Ross. I am an embedded wireless FAE for Silex Technology America. Silex is a developer of high performance quality 802.11 products used in medical, telematics, logistics and many other M2M markets. Silex is a Qualcomm authorized design center for the Etheros radio family and a Freescale proven partner. We're also the recommended Wi-Fi solution for the Freescale IMX6 processor platform. In the following presentations, I will be covering the available power save mechanisms in the current Wi-Fi standards, power save when looked at from a system level, and the impact network security has on power save. Finally, the presentation will look at how the latest Wi-Fi di devices are addressing the power save demands of modern applications. So, how and where do you save power? Physically, is there anything we can do? Well, the power required to send information is determined by the law of physics and there's not much that can be changed with these. Additionally, the expectations of Wi-Fi performance, range, throughput, etc. are bound by the 802.11 spe specification and there's always an expectation that performance will not be impacted even when attempting to reduce power. There are transmit power management schemes but these are proprietary and will not be discussed in the presentation. The next thing that can be addressed is transmit efficiency. This is how many real pieces of information get sent per joule of energy. This is the target of most of the standards effort and a large portion of the presentation will look at this and how it's been addressed in the standards. The next thing is turning things off, transmitter, host system, different parts of the solution. Makes sense right? You only turn the light on in the room when you need to see what's in the room. Well. We'll see how the standards and technology have addressed this approach. Well, let's first look at power save in the WLAN standards. Power save has always been part of the, w stand, the WLAN standard, that's 802.11, but the devices it was targeted out were a lot different than the one used today. These were primarily laptops with big batteries moving between conference rooms. No thought was made for the possibility that Wi-Fi could and would be added to small handheld devices being used in all aspects of our life. With the recent addition of Wi-Fi to mobile devices, specifically cell phones, the power save requirements have been changed and as a result the application and capabilities of the standards had to follow suit. There is now a greater focus on power saving and Wi-Fi than at any previous stage in its existence. These changes have not only been driven by the reduction in device hardware, but even more significantly the applications being used on the hardware. Gone are the days when all you did in your device was save a spreadsheet to a server. The idea of a mobile IP phone or video streaming device like Netflix or Hulu or internet radio like Milk and Slacker were never even considered as part of the original PowerSafe standards. The advancement, advancements in hardware and application have shaped the power save options available today in 802.11. We'll review these and discuss their use in applications. But first, there are some things you just can't change, and they place a boundary on some of the approaches taken in power save, and as a result must be considered in any final solution. Firstly, physics. RF transmission is not linear with respect to power like a wired solution. It's an inverse square law that means you need to quadruple the power to double the theor theoretical range. This means there's a significant penalty in power if we, if we try to improve performance by increasing the output of the transmitter. This is all counter to trying to make a low power efficient RF communications technology. Also, given that 802.11 and regulatory limitations establish the baseline for tr transmission and performance, we will not be looking for advancements via altering the TX power range of the device. It is what it is, as defined by the standards. Secondly, 
In a wired system, it is possible for a receiver to detect a change of energy on an input and respond, i.e. go from sleep to an awake state. This is efficient because the infrastructure the device is connected to can significantly increase the relevancy of the wake-up signal down to a small group or even an individual device. However, in a wireless infrastructure, since the transmission is in the open media, the devices using the media have no way to isolate the transmissions that are for them, except by listening to them all and making decisions based upon some initial information in the received packet or header. But the problem is here that without synchro synchronization, that's an agreed upon cycle of interaction between the transmitter and the receiver, the receiver must be on all the time, not good for power saving. So, even through standards, technology and good engineering, if you're able to overcome or at least mitigate these limitations, we discover there are competing demands upon the technology that impact how far you can go. Specifically, we will talk about the need to maintain a secure network while limiting power consumption in the target devices. This is a case of two steps forward and one step back. Well, that's it for part one. Please proceed to the second part of the series where I will discuss the WLAN standards and how they address the changes in Wi-Fi use. Thank you for listening and like I look forward to presenting the rest of the series to you.